I guess another day and another IgG4 reporting in the mRNA vaccinated. This is uh, another video that I want to tell you about where we have data about four mRNA shots and what's happening. There's some bad news that I'm going to share as well. This is now the second paper about it. They claim they were the first ones, my second. And uh, there also is the first one that we have information with adenovirus-based vaccine with followed by two mRNA boosters. My name is Dr. Mikula Rashik of Neurogenomics. Genomics. Let's get started. It might be noisy here because I'm on a pullout, but I wanted to show you this amazing view behind me with this wicked fog. All right, this study is from Bangladesh, by the way. So the story continues that we're having this data from all over the world. And unfortunately, it's a very small study. They only did uh, 10, 10 participants who had four shots of Pfizer mRNA vaccine, and then 19 participants who had two AstraZeneca vaccines followed by two mRNA boosters. Okay, so that's how data we have. Um, they took... Um, they took um, data, blood samples um, prior to vaccination, um, one month, uh, one to two months post first shot, one month after the second, one month after the third, one month after fourth, and I think six months as well after the second. So you have a very wide distribution, but what's really cool that after the, the, the third shot, after the third shot, it was about a year, and after the fourth shot, it was about two years of data altogether. So the typical story is always the same. So they basically see, I, of course, after the vaccination, you see an increase in IgG1. Now that IgG1 antibodies, those are the ones that we want. Those are the neutralizing ones. They last, they last for a few months and then they start dropping and um, they basically drop after it all the way to the baseline levels after the, the primary vaccinations of the first two shots. And they were seeing the same thing, basically very similar pattern, whether people were being vaccinated with mRNA vaccines or with, uh, with the AstraZeneca vaccines. And then this could be reignited so that you reboosted if you took the booster shot, but it was very short lived, those, that reboosting of IgG ones. They dropped a, a month or two later back down to the baseline levels. And then what happened is they, um, th once the fourth shot was taken, the reboosting was still happening, but marginal. Uh, where, of course, the story is, um, is of importance to us is what happened specifically uh, with the IgG4 antibodies. And with the IgG4 antibodies, the pattern is the same as we've always seen, so that basically there are now multiple authors now um, mentioning that IgG4 antibodies started to rise post mRNA vaccinations about a month after the second shot and then it increases after six uh, six months so we've now we have multiple reportings uh, show telling you telling us this that level increased further after the third and fourth shot okay so we see that clearly now here comes some of the bad news that I've tell, told you that I have some bad news to share so the bad news number one is that the authors also showed that there, was, there were people who had breakthrough infection and they labeled them uh, in the graphs with a different color. The only problem, and you can see rise in a breakthrough infected individuals, rise in IgG4 antibodies. So we've seen that as well. That's not new. The problem is, is that they, when they provided the information in the legend, they mentioned that this included people who were infected either before or after vaccination. And that's not good news is because, and they didn't separate them. And if you look at the data, the IgG4 for those who were infected started to rise in individuals, in those few individuals after the third shot. So this might negate the previous idea that prior infection might protect you from rise of beef. If you are infected with the virus before you took mRNA vaccines, you might be protected from uh, you might be protected from IgG4. Now this might put that in question. The reason why is because they were observing 
rise in IgG, of IgG4 in, in that one or two individuals. They did not label whether they were infected before or after, and I could not find that information. So not welcome news. Now, when it comes to those who took AstraZeneca and follow, followed by two mRNA boosters, unfortunately, this is bad news number two is that it appears that after the fourth shot, these individuals were definitely, pretty much all these individuals were producing IgG4 antibodies as well. Basically, the take-home message here is that it is repeated mRNA vaccination that eventually will lead to the production of IgG4s, and that might be inescapable, both in terms of prior protection from temporary protection with infection before vaccination it seems that perhaps if you keep boosting with mrna vaccines eventually you're going to produce those igg4 antibodies as well or if you took astrazeneca and then you follow with multiple mrna boosters you very likely will uh, will also be producing igg4 antibodies as well there like i mentioned they observed it in all those individuals who took the fourth shot um two astrazenecas two mrna boosters they all started producing IgG4 at the lower pace than individuals who had all four mRNA vaccines. But nevertheless, that increase was that increase was evident. And again, they labeled individuals who were infected either before or after vaccinations as well. And again, we see that there are there were individuals who who they all produce IgG4 antibodies. So. Um, that means it's still we need more information, more studies to find out what is really happening and, and perhaps uh, whether prior infection before the mRNA vaccination does truly protect you or not. That might now become a question mark. And it looks like if you took AstraZeneca, but you had at least two mRNA boosters afterwards, you very likely might be producing, um, producing um, IgG4 antibodies as well. Okay. So... So there's that, but there's one more bad news that I want to share with you. Unfortunately, they did some other uh, additional information uh, studies, and what they looked at is ratios between IgG1 and IgG4. And basically, they claim that ultimately what happens is IgG4 replaces in dominance in terms of quantity the IgG1. So they, the IgG4 targeting the spike protein became the more prominent antibodies than the IgG1. We've seen that before as well. But here, these guys also quantitated the ratios. So what they did is they looked at the ratio between IgG1 and IgG4. And ideally, you want that ratio to be high. And what they were saying is that with each successive mRNA vaccination, that ratio kept dropping and eventually especially after the fourth shot of mrna vaccine that that ratio kept dropping meaning there was more igg4 in relation to igg1 so um and that's why is that not good is because there it's the exactly ratio between igg1 and igg4 that is of concern to us in terms of in in terms of um surveillance or um, cancer surveillance that, um, whether that might be impacted so by the way we have no clinical information on that this is just simply the worry that we have to contend with and clearly we really need studies on this topic to determine whether 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 that's a clinical issue but that's the concern and they're clearly showing that the ratios are affected definitely in the individuals who took the four mRNA shots and that ratio also dropped in those who took the AstraZeneca and then followed by two mRNA boosters, that ratio of IgG1 to IgG4 also dropped, meaning unfavorable ratio. That's not necessarily what we want to see because again, we don't know what that might mean with regards to cancer immunology, cancer related immunology patterns. Okay. So that's the last uh, last bad news I would share with regard uh, with regards to this particular publication. Now they did something else that I thought was really interesting, and they also looked at interleukin ten levels. What's really interesting about this is that they studied they looked at how much interleukin ten was being produced by these individuals after each vaccination, and what they showed is the following: that with each 
mRNA vaccination, the interleukin levels, the interleukin 10 levels were rising. Now that's a cytokine, by the way. Cytokines are chemicals or molecules that are used by immune cells to communicate with each other. This is basically what the immune system does when it's doing its function, right? It's, it it uh, releases many different chemicals or molecules. Interleukin 10 is one of them. And uh, and uh, the, the reason why this is interesting is because they were able to show that it corresponded with the increase in IgG4 levels as well. So that the more IgG4 levels people were producing, the more likely they were also producing though that interleukin 10 cytokine. And that was also observed with, the, with those who took the AstraZeneca shots. When they took AstraZeneca shots, there was no IgG4 at the beginning at all right and there was also no interleukin 10 at all in those individuals but as soon as the astrazeneca individuals started taking mrna boosters the igg4 started to rise as did interleukin 10 levels so the authors propose that the interleukin 10 rise is the mechanistic reason what induces the production of these igg fours in the end and that makes sense the reason why is because Mm, it's been known from the past that interleukin 10 is involved in the in the class switch from I, um, two IgG4 antibodies. So that's been known from before. And they also brought up a, a study in mice that my, in mice that were repeatedly vaccinated against spike protein, just like humans. And those mice were also shown to eventually start producing interleukin 10 levels and build immunologic tolerance towards the spike protein. So very similar to what we're now observing with humans, right? But, but they're the first ones to finally show, look, this is basically what's going on. What's going on? We're producing these interleukin 10. So now we have some mechanistic explanation for this. In terms of why, why only the mRNA vaccinated individuals start producing IgG4s and we don't see this after AstraZeneca, they said they didn't have really the reason for it. Uh, but they did mention repeated what other scientists have been saying it has likely to do with how much antigen, i.e. the spike protein, is being presented to, to the immune system. So very interesting paper, very powerful paper and, and because of this information. Um, and now we need even more studies, we need even more time spent uh, either post for uh, MRI for vaccinations and it will be even more interesting to see what happens with even additional boosting because now we have we are up to six shots in total that people might have taken right so there will be interesting to see what happens with, with with these authors do warn like listen this is not welcome we should not be um accepting this rise in igg4 because while igg4s can be po positive to us as well in terms of fighting allergens or parasites they can also be pathogenic and they mention three possibilities, development of autoimmune conditions, um, cancer immunology being affected, and finally, big bus went by. And finally, of course, the potential of production of IgG4-related diseases. And uh, while I've never discussed this yet, but we did cover this topic in a recent review that I was participating in with a number of scientists in relation to cancer immunology and IgG4 antibodies, we did mention that IgG4-related disease has been diagnosed um, on several occasions after, after mRNA vaccinations, although maybe it, it was a misdiagnosis, we just simply was the, some of the earliest signs of, of uh, of observation that IgG4 antibodies are produced post mRNA vaccination. So what the authors mentions, we should be watching, watching out for this. Perhaps antigen levels have to be, be re-evaluated. Re and finally, maybe the spacing of vaccination is another concept we need to reevaluate. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed this amazing view and um, Thank you for your support. Please share, please like, please leave a comment and also check out my Patreon account. And I look forward to another installment in this series. As you can see, I'm very devoted to the topic of, topic of IgG4 um, antibodies. I'm following every single publication that comes out. This is now the 11th publication that I reviewed with you. And um, remember, go outdoors and stay active. And See you next time. Bye, everyone.
Thank <laughs> you.